Examus Eve. Welcome to the last briefing for market research. This is your just before the exam video update, video briefing. At this point, it's not about trying to spend the next less than 24 hours crunching in extra pieces of knowledge and information. It's about getting your head in the right space. It's about having your confidence together and it's about having your mindset ready to go into the room. So to that end, what I want to tell you is on your marks criteria for your group assignment, you have the breakdown, how many points you're currently on, what milestones you have achieved in the course already, and what you can possibly be playing for with these last 20 points. As it is one of my exams, the championship belt offer is, as always, on the line, the best score, the highest scoring exam will move from whatever it scores to 20 marks. If you are the best exam in the room, you get the 20 points, guaranteed. In terms of what you're gonna be asked to do in that exam, the very last thing you have, you wanna be thinking about is, this has been a subject that has been about teaching you to make decisions. It's about teaching you to identify, select, justify, and then work with those consequences. The exam will be no different. You are going to do another scenario where the consequences of your decisions are going to be important. With that in mind, how to prepare. For those of you wondering, quant or qual or both are options. That you're gonna be dealing with a scenario that's gonna tell you, here's your business situation, what you do then is respond to it. There are a set of questions. Please address the totality of the questions. If there are sub-questions in there, address those sub-questions. If there are components, address those components. Think of it from my side for a second, and that is as the marker, I have set up a series of opportunities for you to score points. If you take all those opportunities, then I have the maximum chance of giving you points. If you choose to decline an opportunity, you cannot get points for an opportunity you don't contest. Now again, it's up to you. You've got the freedom to go and say, no, I don't want to do that bit, but that means that you're not in the bidding for points from that section. Now, across the course of this semester, I have laid out various ideas, concepts, frameworks, and one of the things that I tend to do inside the subject videos is I leave little background notes and background pieces of information. I'd just like to point out over my shoulder that that little set of uh, words and notes, they're kind of interesting. That's basically a framework for what you're up against tomorrow, so give that a look. In terms of uh, the way the exam is going to be structured, the one thing I do want to just say to you is much like the tutorial kits, the solo assignment and the group assignment, there is going to be a sequence in which as you are undertaking the assessment task, you're just going to get that little bit better at doing it. The first question is going to lead you into the second part of the question, but because you've got the experience of answering the first part of the question, you're going to be that little bit better at the second part of the question. And same for the third, fourth, and there on. You are still going to learn during that exam. You're still going to react and respond, and you're going to develop as students in the exam room. This is both training and assessment. Now, the final piece of advice I'm going to give you, these are based on some of the questions I've received over the last little while. Uh, from the top, references. You are invited to use them. You can answer the whole thing without references, but that's nowhere near as fun as using references. What I want you to be thinking is, look at a question, work out what you want to give as your answer, and go, where do I know this from? What's my answer? 
my explanation and my source. You've had four assessment tasks for me where we've asked you to reference. For round five, you are free to use references. Do it again. You'll find that if you are treating this as a, hey, this is going to be fun to add the reference in here. This is just going to be that little bit where I go and say, hey, Steve, I'm good. Give me those points. That's what you want to be looking at it from. It's not a, I'm going to punish you if you don't. I'm going to reward you if you do. It's not that you're not, you're getting your candy taken away. It's that you're going to get candy for doing it. Points are there to, for the taking. This is one way to take some of those points. It is your bonus round. So that's the references. Have some fun with it. Actually acknowledge that yes, you have learned stuff this semester and that you do know some of these things and that a Malhotra 2010 reference is not exactly going to break your world or mine to make you do it, but it's just that bit of, yeah, that's where I got that from. Also, all of the slides were Malhotra 2010, so there's, unless you're actually citing a paper I wrote independently, there's no excuse for a Dan 2012 in there. I haven't written anything this year anyway. So there isn't a Dan 2012 out there. In terms of things like there's uh, some of the specs for the exam, please handwriting in a way that I can read it, that'd be kind of neat. Um, if you want to use pencil, try not to use the lightest possible shade that exists. If I can't, if I have to use any form of magic UV light or um, some form of scrying device to read your assignment. That's bad. Don't have a UV light. Secondly, no invisible ink. Thirdly, you can be messy. You don't have to be neat in lines and use liquid paper and all the other stuff like that. Uh, fourthly, legibility counts. If I can't understand the words, I can't necessarily give you points for them. You're not medicine, you're not law. You're supposed to have handwriting. Uh, fifth, there are no word counts for the answers. Sixth, this is a one hour exam, so a little headspace technique to be doing. Divide up your question, work out, look at your scenario, look at your sub questions, plan out how many minutes you're going to spend per sub question. Make certain you've got a watch, not because your phones are going to be confiscated, because uh, you can't have your phone out on the desk either using the clock in the hall or your watch, work out how long you've got for a period of time. You might want to divide them up, say, into 10 minute intervals and have the time when you hit the end of that bit, wrap it up, move to the next section. That way you guarantee you're going to hit each section. Lastly, in terms of what, am I, what could I expect from 20 marks? Well, what could I expect from you as a student is an answer. An answer that goes after the parts of the question that brings together a demonstration that you've thought about the knowledge you've got at your disposal from your semester's experience and applied it to the context that's in front of you. Try to avoid uh, info strafing and info dumping. The questions do make you, do allow you to make decisions and do force you to act on the consequences of your decisions. And one of the things that we are looking at really in this assessment task is opportunity, decision, outcome, consequence as a sort of way of thinking that you go, all right, I can do this. That will lead me to having the following opportunity. From that opportunity, that will result in this outcome. This outcome has this consequence for my answer which is basically the ultimate thing of market research. Like, this subject has been about decisions and information-led decision-making and about evidence, justification, support. All of these elements are what I've been asking you to learn and these are procedures, processes. In this exam, I'm going to give you one more time, one more chance to show me you can do that. And I guess the last thing I'm going to say to you is for those of you who don't believe that you are, who don't trust yourselves to make those decisions in that exam room, I trust you. I believe you can do it. You have practiced, you have trained, you have delivered. It doesn't matter what score you're walking into the exam on, doesn't matter what you're thinking about the exam, 
when you get in there, the only thing that counts is you looking at that question, addressing that question, and giving me that answer. If you want to think all sorts of panicky thoughts and everything else like that, do it afterwards. Delay it. Put it on hold. Whatever. Keep your head in the game. Keep your mind on the task at hand. You've got 60 minutes to have some fun. And seriously, try smiling. Try grinning. Try feeling like, yes, I've got this. When you go to answer that question, you go and do it with confidence. That's going to come through in your answer. You have been in training for this exam. You have been trained for this exam. And I have set up a question that will ask you to use the skills and the abilities you have acquired over this semester. Because I am looking forward to this marking because I want to see what you've got. This is your chance. This is your time to shine. This is your chance to show me. Go out there, have some fun, knock this thing out of the park, and seriously, enjoy the ride, enjoy the rush. You don't get opportunities like this every day. It's 60 minutes, it's intense, it's interesting. Go make it happen. Go have some fun. And that's the last of these. Thank you, good night.